Anterior shoulder dislocation. Anterior shoulder dislocations typically occur when the arm is in a position of abduction and external rotation, such as during a fall on an outstretched arm or due to direct trauma. Types of anterior shoulder dislocation. There are four main types of anterior shoulder dislocations. Subcoracoid dislocation. This is the most common type of anterior shoulder dislocation. In this type, the head of the humerus is positioned beneath the coracoid process of the scapula. Subglenoid dislocation. The head of the humerus is displaced inferiorly, lying below the glenoid fossa. Subclavicular dislocation. In this type, the head of the humerus is displaced inferiorly, beneath the clavicle. Intrathoracic dislocation. This is a rare type of dislocation where the humeral head is displaced into the thoracic cavity. Mechanism of injury. An anterior shoulder dislocation commonly occurs due to specific mechanisms of injury. It's typically caused by a forceful blow to the abducted, externally rotated, and extended arm. For example, in basketball, a player blocking a shot can experience an anterior shoulder dislocation when the arm is forcefully struck in this position. Additionally, a blow to the posterior humerus or a fall on an outstretched arm can also result in an anterior shoulder dislocation. Examination of Anterior Shoulder Dislocation When a shoulder is anteriorly dislocated, certain characteristic findings can be observed during a physical examination. The affected arm tends to be slightly abducted and externally rotated. The patient experiences resistance and pain when attempting any movement of the dislocated shoulder. In individuals with a slender build, the acromion, which is the bony prominence of the shoulder, may appear more prominent than usual. Additionally, the normal rounded contour of the shoulder is disrupted, indicating the presence of a shoulder dislocation. Imaging for anterior shoulder dislocation. In cases where a glenohumeral dislocation is suspected, Imaging is necessary to confirm the diagnosis and assess the extent of the injury. The recommended imaging approach involves obtaining at least two views, an anteroposterior view and a scapular Y view. Standard Radiography Series for Shoulder A radiograph in conventional anteroposterior projection shows an overlap of the humeral head with the glenoid. Image B is a grassy projection and provides a clear view of the joint space. Image C is a lateral Y view and shows the humeral head symmetrically positioned in the center of the Y of the scapula. This radiograph utilizes a scapular Y view of the shoulder to assess the location of the humeral head. Anterior or posterior dislocation are excluded by a normal position of the humeral head relative to the coracoid and the acromion process. The inferior portion of the Y is formed by the body of the scapula. An axillary view may be useful and should be obtained whenever there is uncertainty regarding the diagnosis of initial radiographs. This is an axillary view of a normal shoulder on radiography, showing the components of the shoulder including the glenoid, humeral head, coracoid process, clavicle, lesser tuberosity, acromion, and greater tuberosity. The diagnosis of an anterior shoulder dislocation is often straightforward, and the injury is easily visualized on the anteroposterior view. In this anteroposterior radiograph, the humeral head clearly lies outside the glenoid and below the coracoid process. The dislocated humeral head usually lies in a subcoracoid position. If the humeral head is subclavicular or subglenoid, there has been a greater degree of displacement and a concomitant greater tuberosity fracture, or rotator cuff tear, is usually present. Associated Injuries and Shoulder Dislocations Shoulder dislocations can lead to several associated injuries, including hill sacs and bankart lesions, as well as fractures of the greater tuberosity. Hill sacs lesion It refers to a dent or indentation on the head of the humerus. This occurs when the humeral head impacts the edge of the glenoid cavity during a dislocation. Approximately 35 to 40 percent of anterior shoulder dislocations exhibit hill sacs lesions. These lesions are most often visualized on an anteroposterior radiograph with the arm internally rotated. Bancart lesion 
These lesions involve injuries to the glenoid labrum, which is the fibrous rim surrounding the glenoid cavity. Dislocation of the shoulder can cause these lesions, which can be classified as either bony or soft tissue injuries. Bony Bancart lesions occur when a fragment of bone is pulled away, while soft tissue Bancart lesions involve disruption of the labrum without bone avulsion. Soft tissue Bancart lesions are more common, accounting for approximately 90% of patients below 30 years of age with anterior shoulder dislocations. However, bony Bancart lesions are found in about 5% of patients. Both types of Bancart lesions are more frequently observed in cases of recurrent shoulder dislocations. Fractures of the greater tuberosity Another associated injury is a bony prominence on the proximal humerus, which can occur in approximately 10% of patients with shoulder dislocations. These fractures are significant and may require appropriate management for optimal recovery. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.